direction to measure wear. Measure the cylinder liner. Set the line of the big end bore of the connecting rod. Turn the crankshaft until the big end bore is at the housing inspection window and remove the pole nut. Attach the jack stand and the hydraulic jack. Tighten the hydraulic jack until it's completely seated, then back the jack off one turn. Raise the hydraulic pressure to the specified pressure relief valve and gradually lower the hydraulic pressure. Remove the hydraulic jack and turn the big end bore sideways. Turn it until it reaches the guide plate. Support the big end bore on both sides and carefully separate both sides to avoid damaging the crankshaft. Clean the crank pin bearing shell thoroughly and inspect the back surface and the joint surface of the bearing shell for fretting, traces of burning, or debris. Check for damage or fretting on the serrated teeth and rod part. Perform a color check on the serrated teeth to see whether there are any cracks. Check for dents or burrs on the nut seating area and the threads and bolt seat of the crank pin bolt. Now check the inner diameter of the big end bore. Confirm that the crank... Without fitting the bearing shells, assemble the big end bore and fit nuts only after making sure that the tally marks and knock pins match perfectly. Tighten the big end bore to the specified pressure and measure the big end bore diameter. Now, an explanation of the assembly procedure of the connecting rod big end bore. Match the claws and assemble the bearing shells. At this time, do not apply grease or oil to the back of the shells. Wipe the crankshaft clean and apply lubricating oil to the surface of the bearing shells. Check the location of the identification mark, round embossed seat and knock pin. Face the round embossed seat toward the front of the engine and assemble the metal cap halves from both sides without scratching the crankshaft. The bolts and nuts are punched with numbers, so be careful not to misplace bolts when reassembling. Attach the nuts and fasten them. Tighten the nuts to the specified pressure in the same order as when disassembling. When they're seated, secure them by tapping the jack handle with a hammer. Then attach the pole nut. Check if the big end bore turns easily on the crankshaft. Now let's assemble the piston and connecting rods. Clean and air blow each part before assembling the pistons. For the rings, use all new rings and put them onto the piston with the manufacturing mark facing up. Place the coil spring joint on the opposite side of the oil ring butt. Assemble as shown in the diagram to ensure that the rings are put in the right order.
measure and record the clearance between the ring and the ring groove with a thickness gauge. When assembling the piston and connecting rod, match the F mark on the piston combustion surface to the round embossed seat on the rod part of the connecting rod. Apply lubricating oil on the piston pin and fit the piston pin into the piston. Then fit the snap rings into the groove. Check the side clearance between the piston and the small end of the connecting rod. Place the piston insert ring on the top of the cylinder liner. Apply lubricating oil to the piston insertion ring, cylinder liner, piston ring, and piston skirt. Adjust the piston ring gaps to 90 degree intervals. Place the crank pin at bottom dead center. Then slowly insert the piston into the cylinder liner, lowering it slowly while matching the bottom of the rod part with the big end. Finally, match the knock pin. Place the protect ring so that the identification mark can be seen from the top. Spray Molycoat 1000 on the threads and seat of the connecting bolt. The connecting rod part has A and B punch marks. Using a torque wrench, tighten to the A mark. Two, three, one. Further tightening to the B mark is also done in this order. One, four, two, three.